Hi everybody, it's Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com, my personal blog, sharing with the world the things I've learned to help teaching be a little bit easier because we all need a little bit of help. It's a it's a hard life. So today's video is all about getting started to create your Bitmoji virtual classrooms. Very exciting. These were game changing for me. I was so excited when I found them. So I'm going to share some of the stuff I've learned along the way. And a lot of it came from the Bitmoji Craze for Educators Facebook group. If you haven't already joined that group, please do. It's like a treasure trove of resources from amazing and generous educators. They're all so much more talented than me. This is just me putting it together to help bring it to you as best I can. So if you have any questions, this is the first of a series of blogs about Bitmoji classrooms. Um, go to mrswatsoneducation.com and read through them at your own pace and I have all my tutorial videos linked there as well. So let's start by getting started in making your own classroom for virtual uses. Um, this could be helpful for virtual and non-virtual however you see fit. Um, and I'm going to sh just go through my Google Drive, I'm going to go into Google Slides, make a new, um, I'd go into new blank presentation, it will load up, and when it loads up, it looks something like this, a blank screen. Now I'm going to be talking through this tutorial for Google Slides. You can also make Bitmoji classrooms or style classrooms in Microsoft PowerPoint. I just prefer Google Slides, and that's what I'm comfortable with, but you can do that otherwise. That, um, it's the same idea, and there's also these videos on um, YouTube, I'm sure, that talk you through the um, PowerPoint version, but it's the same concept, so you can apply. They have the same kind of tools there. PowerPoint actually has a little bit more like 3D manipulation tools, which are cool. So first thing you're going to do is, before you get to this, right, or something very different than that, but the same idea, you have this blank canvas. And think of it not as a traditional PowerPoint presentation canvas where you have a vocabulary word, a definition, a pop of a word, and you transition with a cool transition to a slide. This is a virtual room. This is a space that needs your interior design touches. So you, the first thing you do when you have a blank canvas as an artist is you decide what the outcome wants, what you want the outcome to be. Do you want your virtual classroom to be kind of like your own room as a class upset? up and where you could have your students see some information and get all those links to the sources they need to be successful in your class do you want it to be make it an interactive game or are they going on a field trip to the ocean and you have little um, links to different animals that have different like Wikipedia or like discovery education or something links like that to the different animals and what they do what um, I've seen libraries I've built some really cool libraries in this kind of format so you have to start thinking what is the goal of my Bitmoji classroom before you start building. And there's so many awesome goals. Like I said, go to that Facebook group to see what creative things people have done. Once you decide, okay, I want this to be this purpose. So for this video, I'm making a standard classroom with information links so that you can get started. Then you have to start building. And the first thing you build is your background, your basic background. Now, I like to use the fourth of the, the bottom fourth of the slide as the floor space so I could have some freedom and flexibility to add things there. And the rest of it as wall space because I like to have nice big whiteboards with information on them that's easily read. But I've seen so many other versions. I've seen some teachers that have very, very little floor space but they still make it work um, with the layering and tons of stuff on their walls because they're doing every letter of the alphabet up there with some, um, cool features or I've seen students or sorry teachers that have had very little wall space in the back so it makes it look like a longer or more depth of a room and they have tons of floor manipulatives because maybe they're teaching lower and um, grade students and they are on the floor and they have blocks and stuff like that so whatever your needs are that's where you design this is where I'm comfortable with because I teach middle school and that's kind of it gives me a midway there Okay, so you're going to start importing your pictures. Now, these could be your personal pictures, which is always best for copyright, but you know those are safe. Um, or you can search for pictures online. Now, just knowing that, I'm just going to do my quick little blurb. We are educators. We should be putting um, our best foot forward, leading by example. So there's tons of pictures you could find online. And it's very tempting. And we do have some flexibility as teachers and educators with fair use. Just be aware of what that all entails. For this video, since I'm posting it to the public, um, I made sure that every single image I'm using was on um, either open copyright or um, my personal stuff I've created so that I have no problem sharing that I know it's all legal for me to do so uh, it takes a little takes a little longer because you'll be surprised that when you enter a word in and you change the search settings on Google how 
much different the results are sometimes. But in my blog post, I have a few links to some um, places where they have a collection of pictures that are really nice and helpful. Please look through those um, and make your best judgment when it comes to getting the sources of your pictures for your Bitmoji classroom. Um, Next, so once I go through that, I'm going to start importing the pictures in. Simply do this. You just upload from your computer over here. You'll have whatever things you've saved and found on your um, recent documents or downloads, and it will come in here, and you can just down, um, manipulate it, slide it around as you need and see fit. I like uh, creating my own. But I've seen some really great Bitmoji classrooms where people have already taken like pre-done classrooms and use that as their background. Um, I'm actually going to be sharing in my blog the links to this classroom, like the blank version of it. Not this blank, but maybe more so like this a little bit. And um, some of the other classrooms I made for these tutorial videos. So you have a starting point if you want, you can copy those. Or I've seen people, this is great, they're not so familiar with the, the, all the imagery and they wanna be safe. They just take a picture of their physical classroom and then import it as their background. So to do that with any image, you just go to background at the top, choose image, and you can upload any picture. So ch ch take your picture of your classroom, upload it there, and as your background now, you have your actual physical classroom that you could add um, things to to, to make it more interactive and your students already know what it looks like. Very cool option. Um, the great thing about changing something as a background is that it makes it fixed, which means you can't move it or manipulate it anymore. So that's kind of good and bad depending on what your needs are. I like once I know this is my set up, I'm going to keep this like this. I like to take a screenshot of that setup and then change it to the background for all my slides so that as I'm starting to customize and move um, and integrate some of the, I'll show you the linkable stuff, nothing moves around from slide to slide and it's kind of safe and secure there. That's up to you. Some people like to be able to move, move things around as they go. So it's really your choice there. So I set up my, my, um, my wall. Now I like some of the formatting issues, or not issues, tools that you have with Google Slides. They're nice and simple. So if you just go to format options, you could do things like flipping the picture, which is really helpful. You could do that with your Bitmojis. Um, changing the position. So sometimes it's just need up by a teeny bit moved. This gives you some more flexibility to do that. Recolor. The original picture for this was a little bit darker. And I was able to, you could see the brightness is moved over just a bit because I wanted some nice, bright, fresh walls for the atmosphere of my classroom, nice and bright. And so I just moved that over just a bit and I still got a little of the some of the details and the texture but it's a lot happier to me um, you can do that with contrast drop shadow I'll talk about why that's important in the future so I did that with my um, my background and that makes me feel good um, the flooring this was a big picture my classroom has those standard linoleum tiles but um, this is as close as I could get to it with using the free resources this is just industrial carpet but when I made it full page it just looked kind of weird so what I did is I just made a copy of it put two side by side and I have the better visualization there now when you go through the slides it kind of looks weird just like this but as you start adding the other components some of the weirdness to it goes away and it looks pretty cool. The last thing I like to add, it's not um, required and it, it's just something I prefer, is I always add a little bit of a baseboard on the bottom. This is just two long rectangular um, shapes using the shape tools that I have shading applied to, but you could also find pictures of baseboards online if you'd like. Um, and just that gives it a kind of a smoother transition between the wall and the floor, in my opinion. Now, once you get that set up, you start building the rest of the classroom, which is really fun because this is your interior designing. I'm like the inner nerd Sims um, player in me from like, growing up just loves this part of it because that's what I love to do is that design part. So once again, you're going to be importing all your pictures and manipulating them, moving them around the room as you need. Um, how do I get all these pictures to not have those white backgrounds or any kind of backgrounds? Well, I have a tutorial video. It's linked in this blog below. Um, it looks like this. This is it. That will show you how I use one of the many, many tools available to get rid of backgrounds from pictures. And that just gives your items a more realistic look and it makes it look nice and clean. So another thing um, that you can do with the tools is recolor. So this book is the only book I found online that I liked that was free to use. It was this bright pink, which I like the bright pink. That's cool. But I wanted three other books in my bookshelf that I created. So I just went to recolor 
color you can see here I could have a teal book yellowish green book some maroon books so that's a nice other feature just to do quick differentiation between things without having to go find a whole new um, resource so that's just another quick tool so I put all these together and you want to really think so what are the tools I want my students to have access to in this virtual classroom um, the computers if you get computers it's a great way to have them see a link to like IXL or Nearpod or some sort of interactive activity you could put a, a TV there or a monitor for um, links to YouTube videos stuff like that which is what I'm going to show you in just a moment um, I wanted a filing cabinet I'll talk about why bookshelf now inside the bookshelf I have these spaces I could add little knickknacks more pictures I could add a um, science teacher so a model of DNA some kind of cool features for that always think about where you want to enter your bitmoji so I made the space empty on purpose so that's where my bitmoji will be going and that's my next tutorial video and um, blogs here in the series of blogs about doing the bitmojis um, the class calendar I couldn't find when I left so I just made this one on Google slides on the separate slide um, this was a poster I had in my room I love this quote so I actually got the wood board from a floor picture and I trimmed it down to what I wanted and now that's not a floor it's a wood sign in my classroom uh, one of the cool things that you could do is you can add borders to your images that you're putting on the walls like you'd have a border around things just to give them a little bit more dimension and you can also do shadow drop so it's really it's not as easily seen on this one but if I do drop shadow or not so that's no drop shadow it's kind of flat and one-dimensional but if I go over here and do a drop shadow, it's a slight difference, but it does make it look like it's standing out a bit more, which it's a tiny detail your students would never know, but that's just something I do to make it give that more realistic look. Uh, and yeah, so those are some of the things I do. I was trying to think, is there anything else there? that I want you know okay so each item movable once you're good with that then you start going to the final stage of creating your bitmoji classroom and this is where it's a game changer I'll talk to you in a um, further on in the series about how to share these with your students and emails on your canvas sites all over the place and how easy it is to do the great thing is it's constantly updated so when you share something and you change the date up here it's going to change the date on all the ones you already shared and you don't have to reshare it so a amazing anyways um, let, that's all for another video but that's one of the big things that is a game changer for me for using these classrooms and is worth spending the time to do them so the next thing I'm gonna do after I have my design elements figured out and entered in I'm going to start using um, thinking about the linking to make it virtual so on the whiteboards and you could have this on pictures and any place you want people have easels up with directions um, I will put my daily agenda and so I would do a daily agenda if we were in a distance learning kind of um, education again if I was in a regular physical classroom I would probably put my unit materials up there so the students throughout the unit have access to that um, because I, I tell them the daily agenda when they show up for class they don't need to see it uh, so that's what I would change there now you could have your checklist you could have links and this is so cool so if I want them to read the blog what do I do well I copy the link the web address and let's see sorry I'm gonna get rid of this because we don't need that anymore I'm gonna move myself just a little, little bit so okay so I'm gonna go through highlight the part I'm gonna actually highlight the whole thing you never know if a kid doesn't click something I've linked it now to mrs. Watson education.com which is my blog oh sorry I messed it up okay sorry I already did it automatically but so now the students when they get your emoji class and I'll show you the sharing later like I said when they click here it's gonna take them directly to the resource they want not they don't have to sit there and type it in saying I can't find it because how we know how much that happens like oh it didn't work for me there's no chance of that happening because you have it linked directly um, you can do that for presentate other presentations you want them to look through for near pods for um, activities for uh, all sorts of anything you could get a URL for or watch this video on YouTube you can link it that way and that's just using the text to link but it gets better okay so not only can you link the text but you can link actual things so if I want my students to go to my course calendar I could go where I have my course calendar I'm gonna do a whole other blog on how I use Google Calendar for my planning and my class calendar um, but I go to where I have my calendar I take the URL from that or if it's a document that I have saved somewhere whatever it is I take that URL and then I'd 
go through up here, you can link it to whatever URL that you want it to link to. So now this calendar is decorative, but it also has a function to show your students your calendar, okay? Um, this also can link to pages. So if you go here, you could link it to a um, page in the presentation. I'll talk about that a little bit more in like three tutorial videos about how you can make multiple rooms to make that work. So that's kind of cool. Uh, videos. Videos are awesome. So you can have YouTube videos on computers right here so the kids can click it. It can start playing. Um, they can make it bigger full screen very easily just by double clicking it. So that's really cool. You can make it so it automatically plays. If you go through there, you can auto play when presenting. So there's really cool features there. Um, but I wanna to talk to you about something else called safe YouTube, because we all know with as teachers, I have the older kids, so they kind of are immune to some of the, well, I have sixth graders, so it's kind of changes, um, but some of the YouTube pick ads and stuff that pops up, but I don't necessarily want them seeing all that, because it's a scary, scary internet world out there. So if you want to have a video in your classroom that doesn't have ads, you go to safeyoutube.net. I'm going to get this URL from my video, my tutorial video. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to generate this new link, and this is going to now take my students to the safe YouTube. I'm gonna actually show you what that looks like first. So I'm just copying that safe YouTube link right there. And it's the same video, but now there will be zero ads. Okay, it's just it's just plays a video. So that's a really nice feature as an educator that I just learned about through that Bitmoji craze for um, educators Facebook group. Very, I like that a lot. The problem with that is you lose the on screen play act um, ability of the video when you're doing your Google slides. So what I do if that's if I want to use a safe YouTube, I'm just going to go to my snipping tool. I'm gonna snip a picture of what that looks like. Copy, paste it. This is, it's okay, so now I don't have the live video anymore. I just have a picture of what the live video would have looked like. And now I'm gonna go back to my URL, copy and paste that into the hyperlink. So now when the students click this, they'll still see the picture like they know for YouTube that it's a video to play, but when they click it, it's going to take them there instead. So there's pros and cons of that, um, however you see fit. You can, um, for the computers, I also just put just a regular box and I can color it with a gradient so it looks kind of more dimensional and you can type in whatever you need and put it on the computer like IXL or um, whatever source you, resource you're using. Um, so especially the electronic ones, the students will see it and know it's a computer source. Um, for wording like I have up here in the picture, and so are in the quote, and also for the files, I couldn't get the fonts to, because they ha they're really formatted for size, some of the fonts where you can, you know, they, their dimensions are um, really, I guess, fixed. So I couldn't get them to fit just right like I wanted. So there's a feature in Google, slides that I just learned about a, like a few weeks ago called Word Art, and I don't know why I never saw and tried this before, but that's what it is. And what you do is you type in the word you want to that you would put in a normal text box, but now it's Word Art, and it could be manipulated in so many more ways. Because a lot of times, this, like I said, the fonts are fixed, so you can't get a really tall font with that. You could change the font out however you want, and this is great. It's Word Art, so now you can change all the design features you can still give it a drop shadow um, you can make it reflected all those features because now it's like a picture so that's really really cool i'm not going to keep that there but that's how i made these words to fit and how i wanted them to fit uh let's see last thing i think it might be the last thing well I'll make sure i go through so in my poster i have my quizzes so these are um websites if you don't know about them they're really cool check them out where students have to um, have a code to do the activities. They're completely free websites, which is awesome, but the codes change frequently based on like the unit material or whatever assignment you give them. So here I have the poster fixed, but I will have the different codes that I could change and remember what I add change here on the original will change on all the locations I have it shared. And the students can go in and get the newest quizzes or the newest Flipgrid code. Um, I not only type in the code, because they should know how to get to those websites, you know, quizzes.com or whatever. But I also link it 
to the actual game or the website there so they could see it they could type it um they could type it in on their own or i could just go directly to it by clicking there so that's a really nice feature uh let's see anything else i'll talk about my bitmoji in my next class linking say i think that's it i know it's a lot to get thrown at you sorry um and I hope you get a kind of a feel for how amazing this can be. I am absolutely obsessed with my Bitmoji classrooms. I love that I know I can use them as my website for regular physical school teaching. I anticipate a lot of back and forth next year. If it's not me going back and forth, the students definitely will be enrolling and unenrolling and back and forth. But this is a way I can make sure all my students are knowing what they need to do each day and that I don't have to sit there and upload files to some random source that my county makes us use. I'll still use it. I'll show you how to integrate it into those like my canvas, but I could just edit my one document and it's there. It makes my life so much easier and it's consistent for the students to see day by day. They don't have to go here and here and here. So that's why I love these. I really hope um, you enjoyed this video and tutorial and remember to subscribe or keep following along on the blogs I'm going to be sharing. It's a whole series. I think there's six of them um, about how to customize your Bitmoji and make it your classroom, your virtual classroom and make it even better. This is just step one. So happy um, designing and hopefully I'll see you next for step two to incorporate your own Bitmojis. Thank you so much and remember subscribe www.mrswatsoneducation.com and have a wonderful day. Bye.